Hello and welcome to this edition of New Life Program, coming to you from Adventist World Radio, the voice of hope. I am your presenter, Victor Nyacharo. In today's program, we are going to have a segment of Health Bite, hosted by Henry Bessem. This is a discussion program that focuses on how we can live a happy and healthy lives according to God's plan. Before we get into that, let's listen to the song, We Are the Army, sung by the group a cappella. Stay tuned. Are we walking into the enemy's camp, laying our weapons down? Shedding our armor as we go, leaving it on the ground. We've got to be strong in the power of his might, prove to the enemy. We are the army of the Lord and we've won the victory. All around us the war is going on between the wrong and the right. We gotta choose which side we're on, the darkness or the light. Cause some of the soldiers of the Lord just don't realize that the captain of the army of darkness has come to blind their eyes. Are we walking into the enemy's camp, laying our weapons down? Shedding our armor as we go, leaving it on the ground. We Gotta be strong in the power of his might Prove to the enemy We are the army of the Lord And we want the victory We are the army of the Lord Therefore, let's not lay our weapons down Our program today is the second episode of a short series on drugs and drug abuse. Have you ever suspected that someone around you is abusing drugs? Stay tuned to find out what to look out for, among other things. Be blessed. Welcome to today's Health Bite. Our program today is the second of a three-episode series dealing with drugs and drug abuse. In the last episode, we learned the differences between legal and illegal drugs and also the use and abuse of drugs, among many other things. Today we are going to look into what makes a person start abusing drugs, the signs to look out for if you suspect that someone around you is abusing drugs, and some of the effects of abusing drugs. With me in the studio to discuss these issues is Pastor Jacob Leichena. Kindly greet our audience. Hello, listener. Welcome, very welcome. Pastor Leichena is also a certified addictions counselor. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Henry Bessem. Pastor Leichena, in your experience as a pastor and addictions counselor, what have been some of the main causes of drug abuse and addiction? Thank you, Henry. There are many reasons why people use or abuse drugs, and the wide range of uh, reasons all causes of drug abuse vary. Many use drugs because of uh, the drugs being easily accessible or available because of uh, their social acceptability, whereby you find drugs are available and uh, the community or the society doesn't mind people using them. It is a normal thing for somebody to use certain kind of drugs. Uh, for example, you find some communities, they will use a local brews and they regard them as porridge, for example. And so it's not wrong, in quotes, to use the porridge. And as the youth and the children grow, they know that it's, it's okay, it's all right to use uh, porridge, in quotes. Other reasons of uh, using drugs among many societies include things like stress, which is one of the leading causes of drug use. Uh, you find in the society... There are issues uh, that affect uh, people who are living in different communities. And uh, because of these, these issues that affect them, they are not able to balance. And this, the stressful moment, many people think that one way they can uh, deal with their stressful moment is uh, by using the, the drugs of choice. Other reasons include things like the, the peer pressure, yeah. whereby you find like people want to do it because other people are doing it. So. The community is uh, as that pressure, and not only the young people in this case, even uh, grown-up people are, are experiencing the pressure because they want to do it the way other people are doing it. Uh, we have um, 
reasons for abuse like uh, a high and dynamic youth. The young people are very dynamic. They want to try different things um, because of culture changes and all these other things. And of course, not to forget the media, which is a, a, has a great influence on our drug and substance abuse. That the picture that the media creates about drug is very pleasant for young people to to embrace. And of course, also there are, there are hidden psychological disorders. I'm looking at a situation like um, a common one, like uh, for example, ADHD. Uh, this is the attention deficit uh, hyperactivity disorder whereby a child grows with uh, a disorder whereby they tend to be hyper in the things they do, play a lot. Hyperactive. Yes. They can play the whole day without getting tired. And uh, this is part of their their life. So if uh, they are shut in without those activities, then they tend to find other things to counter or rather to fill in for what they are lacking. That leads us to the issue of the effects of drug abuse. Obviously, like you mentioned last time, there are different types yeah. of drugs that people can abuse. And what are actually their effects? The effects uh, range from uh, the social, the, the, the economical, political, and even educational effects of drugs. And there are also health effects in this case. When I talk about educational effect, I am talking about a very common scenario whereby you find that, that because of taking drugs, people who have been introduced to drugs are not able to perform very well. Mental, uh, a mental effect whereby the level of reasoning, the IQ is affected because of drug taking. People are not reasoning as, 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 as well because of the drugs. And the effect on the brain also affects generally the functioning of uh, an individual. Uh, socially as well, we are looking at uh, people not being able to do the things that they, they, they like most. They can not socialize normally. Some people will, uh, will say that I take a certain drug so that I can be able to interact freely with, with other people. Yeah, so uh, socially also. And when you're looking at economical, economical effects, is whereby we are saying that Drugs uh, can lead to poverty. Yeah. Yeah. The money spent is not, it's a spent, so it's an effect. Like where family spends so much money or endeavors to earn money, but this money is in essence used for drug uh, and substance of, uh, of use. So like you find the head of the house probably is misusing alcohol. Yes. And by the fifth day of the month, he's already drunk all of his salary. Yes. So, yeah, definitely economically they are affected. And you see that there's close interconnection between the economic and uh, the social effect because when, mm-hmm. when there are issues, financial issues, then they lead to family fights and all those other social challenges that come in a family because of finances. Yeah. Going into that economic angle that you said, I've heard of cases of young people or even older people who when they get into a drug abuse habit and probably get into addiction, they get into crime. Mm -hmm. They start crime within the home. They start stealing stuff from the house. You find little electronic gadgets and objects start disappearing. So the young person is going to sell them to be able to buy these things because probably he doesn't have an income or she doesn't have an income, which is quite unfortunate. I remember hearing a story of one adult father who was uh, addicted to, I think it was heroin or nicotine. Mm -hmm. Heroin, maybe. Yes. Or cocaine. Or cocaine. And he actually had sold almost everything in the house to the point where he took the family dog and he went driving around town looking for someone to buy the dog. Yeah. And so that he could pay for his habit, which is very unfortunate. It's it's really unfortunate, the, the effects drugs have on people. What about physically? How, how can a drug affect a person physically, in appearance or within them? Alcohol, for example, affects the brain. It affects the liver. It affects the kidney. Uh, it affects the reprodu- reproductive system. So alcohol is not just a pastime. It's not just an innocent thing you can be doing. 
it it actually has serious repercussions, serious consequences. Definitely, and the the the, the effect is uh, many people are, are ignorant about the effect of alcohol because when uh, many times when I'm interacting with people during sessions, you ask them, "Do you have any problem? I mean, drug problem?" And they will say, "I don't have any problem. The only thing that I think uh, uh, I use is alcohol." So they don't think alcohol is alcohol is is, is, is a problem or is a drug. So for that, you've said it can affect the liver. Yes. I think that's liver cirrhosis. Liver cirrhosis, precisely. And the kidney. The kidney. And uh, the brain. The, the brain. You mentioned in the other program that it actually kills some brain cells. The brain cells, which are not replaceable. Yeah. And the effect is very, envy is very, is very evident. Look at an example of a person who is intoxicated. They are not able, there are things that are visible. The effect are very visible. They are not able to walk straight. The effects are very, very visible. If you look at a drunk person, their balance, their psychomotor balance, all these are effects. They are not able to walk straight. Their reasoning is, is, is uh, impaired. Yeah. Their judgment, they do not make a right judgment. That's why you find somebody goes out with money from, for the family use, maybe house rent or electric, electricity bill or other bills. And they spend the whole of it because they are not able to reason out very, very well. And also other, other drugs like tobacco, the nicotine effect. We said in our previous uh, discussion that uh, tobacco has up to 4,700 chemical components, which are, have an effect on the body. And the effect includes the cancers of different parts of the body. We're talking about uh, throat cancers, stomach cancers, uh, the heart. There's lung cancer. There's lung cancer. And also things like gangrenes. Some some of the diseases of the lower extremities, not to mention uh, uh, the reproductive system, whereby people tend to become people become impotent because of um, tobacco use. Okay. Uh, uh, the the understanding here is that uh, blood does not flow to the extremities, and so if blood is is not able to flow, then the body cannot function very well. So when blood cannot flow to extremities, you find like the legs. You get gangrene. You get gangrenes. Okay. Yeah. So that those effects are very, very evident. We're talking about other drugs like marijuana. Marijuana is as an effect on hallucination effects, which makes people to see things that are not actually. And cut also. Cut also has an effect on the whole system of the body, Andre. So these drugs are of evident effect that are very visible. So by cut you mean K H A T, the yeah. the little weed that is chewed. Actually, yeah, it's it's a it's a twig that yes. is chewed, yes, and gives a high found in places like Ethiopia, Yemen, uh, Somalia, and part uh, other parts of Eastern Africa, including the including Kenya. I think on that note, we'll have a break, and coming up next, we are going to talk about the signs to look out for when you suspect that someone around you is a drug abuser, and we'll also find out if drug abuse can run in the family, among other things. Stay with us, we'll be right back. is Adventist World Radio, the voice of hope. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can contact us on the producer, New Life Program, Adventist World Radio, P.O. Box 42276, 
code 00100 Nairobi Kenya. More contact details will be at the end of the program. Let's continue with Henry Bessem and Pastor Laishena on drugs and drug abuse. Welcome back again. We are continuing our discussion on drugs and drug abuse and I'm with Pastor Laichena and he was just about to tell us, Pastor Laichena, you're about to tell us, what are the signs to look out for when you suspect that someone is a drug abuser or a drug addict? Uh, thank you, Henry. Typically uh, or generally there are uh, things that are visible in somebody who is starting to use drugs or who, who is uh, in the habit of abusing drugs. There's general neglect of responsibilities. If this person is a student or is a worker or the family responsibilities, generally they tend to neglect them and not care about them. The other thing is that uh, even if they inform that uh, their habit is dangerous or is affecting them, they will tend to neglect that also. Uh, they might get into legal trouble like police arrest. And these are signs to show that the person is getting affected by the drug of, uh, of choice. And a relationship don't matter anymore for somebody who is uh, abusing drugs. They are antisocial. They think they cannot function without the use of uh, drugs to uh, attain an, a, a functional relationship. They avoid um, anything that is reason or they do not want to reason out things. Okay, they don't like to have like a logical debate on anything. And especially which touches on their dragging life. Their drug abuse. Yeah, their drug abuse life, yes. Also physically, there they, they are, they are signs that are visible or signs and symptoms that are visible like the red eyes, that they're eating and sleeping patterns which are affected, weight loss. What yeah. happens to their sleeping pattern? Uh, you find like somebody's uh, not aware of the time, the time of the day or even the dates because they are dragging the whole night and then they, they sleep during the day. So that kind of like confuses the so sleep. So they're using drugs all night. Yes. And in this case, Henry, we are looking at alcohol, for example, as the, the main drug, whereby somebody will, will drink the whole night and come and sleep during the day. And this changes the whole sleeping pattern, as it were. Uh, and also in behavior, whereby you, you find like if they are, they're in school, their performance starts to drop. If they're in workplace, they do not submit their reports in good time. They are absent from work. And all these other things are change of friends. They, they do not maintain their friends for a long time. And also other personality or psychological behavior, so to say. For example, anxiety. They tend to lie. Actually, they are pathological liars. They, they lie and lie and lie to, to get their drug of choice. Some drugs will create a paranoid uh, effect, which is very visible, where they, they have outbursts of anger or that they have fear. Let me give you an example. Like somebody who is uh, abusing marijuana, they tend to be scared because their perception, remember, in the effect has been interfered with. For example, they could see uh, a grasshopper flying and they would, they would think it's an airplane or it's an helicopter. And because of that fear, they would, they would, you would see them cover themselves up because they are not. They are seeing something that is not actually there. Remember, it's an hallucinogenic effect of uh, the drug, as it were. I mean, that's a really sad situation because this is a person whom David refers to as being fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes. Now is is trying to hide, take cover, because he has just seen a grasshopper passing. Yes. That, that's very unfortunate. And another question was physical appearance. Before the program, you mentioned that sometimes a person who's abusing drugs sometimes become quite untidy. Yes. Find they no longer take care of basic hygiene issues. Precisely. Combing their hair, clean clothes. Taking a bath. Yes. And it's, sometimes it's, it's not by choice because they happen to drink like if somebody's abusing alcohol, for example, they'll drink the whole night. And morning comes and they remember they must go to work. And they, they will go to work. They will not have time to go and change or freshen up. So they might go to work before they freshen up. And so because of this effect, you find that they are not able to function very normally. Some people have suggested that drug abuse can run in the family. Is it possible for drug abuse to be hereditary? Yes. Actually, one of the causes of our drug and substance use is what we refer to as a genetic predisposition, whereby somebody has... A, the propensity to abuse drugs if they come from a family 
that has drug use history uh like in 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 a, when you're doing intake and assessment in a, in rehabilitation centers or when you're counseling people we we do we require them to do a genogram a, a family tree and in this family tree they identify they can go like three generation five generation and they identify people in the family tree or in the genogram who have drug and substance abuse issues uh the tendency is that most of them who have uh, the the alcohol problem for example alcoholism tend to have other members in their lineage who have the issues and so psychology modern psychology is in agreement that there's a there's a factor the x factor which leads them to have that uh, tendency or propensity to abuse in drug so am i right to say that this is still a matter of contention it's not solid because it's not like there's a gene that has been identified specifically as being the cause of maybe the father was an alcoholic so the son gets the gene and becomes an alcoholic is there such a gene uh, in this case the x is not the x and y factor as in the x chromosomes and the y chromosomes but the x factor as in x ray that there are factors that have not been identified but it's not a, a question of contention right now in modern science whether there is that genetic predisposition it's been proven by science that there is there is that a genetic uh, predisposition okay so therefore would someone be justified in saying that because my parents were for example alcoholics that means i have basically a perfect excuse to be an alcoholic no uh, people who come from alcoholic families have also the tendency and can choose not to take okay yeah because what you're saying is that that we are encouraging abstinence instead of moderation uh, and especially from a christian perspective whereby uh, we are saying don't try because the challenge is that when somebody tries the alcohol then they cannot stop if they have that propensity of if they have that that uh, disposition or predisposition and like a social drinker will go to a pub and take one one bottle and walk home an alcoholic or somebody who has this genetic uh, a predisposition will drink and drink the whole, the whole of their life they end up becoming alcoholics but the fact that you come from a family that has an alcohol problem doesn't mean that you cannot be live a clean life or a sober life yourself okay i think i've had opinions elsewhere suggesting that actually it is the contact with alcohol early in life that makes this uh, like the child of an alcoholic or a smoker or a drug user sort of inclined towards using that because he has a very uh close familiarity with some of this the paraphernalia the brown bottle of beer is a very uh familiar thing to him and the cigarette smoke and the cigarettes themselves are very familiar so i think it's something that's debatable but for our listener we'd have to say that surely people should not think that because your parents have been abusing drugs you surely have an excuse to also abuse drugs also i would want to add that uh, parenting is one of uh, the causes of drug abuse whereby parents act as bad role models so bad parenting or poor parenting yes causes poor behavior okay. whereby if the parents are using or they are they have a positive regard on alcohol and other drug of use then the the children are likely to tend to be drug users themselves so the family as a unit needs to uh to find other alternative ways of pleasure other than than a drug use because the children see and children do what the children are going to see is what they are going to to do as they grow up so the behavior is picked from uh, the from the parents who are the role models in this case and most of the parents in this case could be failing in guiding their children in the proper way. Okay, I think that's a great place for us to end. Thank you so much for that last point. Thank you. Children do what they see. So the family should work as a unit, as a team to try and help the young people avoid drug abuse and eventually drug addiction. So this marks the end of our program for today. We thank you Pastor Lightena for the light you have shed on these issues. And to our listener thank you for sharing this time with us. Join us again next time when we will discuss how you can approach a person you suspect is abusing drugs, the different options for treatment for drug addicts and abusers, and what family members can do themselves within the home to help such a person. 
Until then, may you be richly blessed. I've been your host, Henry Bessem. I surely hope you listen in on the next part of this series. Remember that God tells us in the Bible, in 3 John chapter 1 and verse 2, that, Beloved, in regard of all things, I pray that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. God wants us to have a good health, not only spiritually, but also mentally and physically and in all aspects of our lives. If you have any comments, questions or suggestions about the program, you can write to us on The Producer, New Life Program, Adventist World Radio, P.O. Box 42276, Code 00100, Nairobi, Kenya, or you can email us on AWR Nairobi at eau.adventist.org. That marks the end of our program today. Thank you for being with us. Until next time, may God protect you and guide you and bless you. Goodbye. How he saved me at an old